Hi, I'm Dr. Evan Matthews. I'm here at Montclair State University in the Extra Science Lab to show you how to use a uh, Power Lab hardware setup, also using the um, finger cuff blood pressure, continuous blood pressure setup, also from ADN Instruments and the lab chart software to collect continuous blood pressure data. Super useful whenever trying to see how um, blood pressure responds to exercise or stress or some other type of perturbation. And it can also be used to get um, estimates of things like stroke volume, cardiac output, and total peripheral resistance. All right, so this is the AD Instruments Human NIBP uh, device. Uh, NIBP stands for Non-Invasive Blood Pressure. So this is the finger cuff blood pressure device that I, we will be using today. So you can see that there are a couple um, uh, different connections to the front here. There's this one with sort of the digital connection and the um, power come from. And then there's this one where you can clearly see a, a clear plastic tube there. That is going to be where the air source comes from so we can get the blood pressure measurements. So both of those are going to be going to this, which is the wrist unit for this device. This wrist unit is going to be placed on the arm, so at the level of the wrist, which is why it's called the wrist unit. And there's going to be at least one finger cuff uh, attached to the front of this, which I'll show you here in a second. And that's going to be how we actually get the blood pressure. So if we look at the back of this device though, so I'm just going to turn it around here. All right, so this is the back of the NIBP device. We need to turn on the system. All right, so I just turned it on. And um, we also need to make sure that we turn on the power lab system, which is uh, a different box here. Um, we have this black um, plug here that's going to go into, turn into a USB and plug into the computer that I have up there. Um, and that is going to be how the actual data gets from this device to the computer where it's going to be integrated using the lab chart software with the other things that we record. So um, turning this back around. Hopefully you can see now that because I turned it on, this power light, which is this little tiny green light, is now on. All right, so now the next thing we need to do is take the participant's hand, so I'll just be serving as the participant here. And this little device is used to figure out what size uh, finger cuff the individual needs to use. So what you do is you slip a finger, whatever finger you're going to be um, analyzing, into this little slot here, and you want it to be um, above the sort of middle joints and below the top joint of the finger and then you just pull this tight, all right? And so wherever it falls, so for me, I am probably somewhere between a medium and a small. So small being this white strip, the gray strip being medium, and blue being the large. So I'm right at the top of the small, right at the bottom of the medium. So with that information, this is actually the small finger cuff up close. So you can see it has the sort of power source here that is also going to be where the, um, the data goes to the wrist cuff unit and then eventually to the NIBP controller and the lab chart software. And then it has this clear plastic tube, which is the air hose where we're going to actually put air into this. So we can see sort of a shiny interior, that shininess is actually a, an air cuff bladder, an air bladder, and that is going to be what fills up with air. And so you can also see in here, I don't want to open it too much, and you never want to open these too much because these have a, a sort of a tight curl to them naturally by the way they're designed, and that's what um, is going to help it fit around the finger properly. And also if you stretch it out too much, so if you try to open this up, you're actually going to break the air bladder, so never do that. So just open it up to about this much should be more than enough to slide it onto the finger. But you can see, again, that shiny sort of plastic air bladder in there. You can also see two little black sensors. So one of those black sensors is actually a light source. The other one is an actual sensor. So it's going to send 
light through the finger, the other one's going to sense how much light comes out, and from that it's able to gather how much blood is in the finger, and through some sophisticated math, knowing how much pressure is in this air tube, it can then estimate the blood pressure inside the finger. So putting this on the finger, you can see on the underside, you can see back both of those black um, dots I was talking about that are on the inside. Again, one is a sensor, one is the light source. If you put it above the middle knuckle and below the top knuckle, so just right in there, and get it on there nice and tight. All right, so you want it nice and tight, but you want to make sure you can't see them now, but those two black sensors are right here, so right on either side of the finger, and it needs to be that way so it can see sort of across the tissue on the bottom of the finger. Another way of knowing that you did that, as long as the size is correct, if this uh, sort of tubing is coming out on the other underside of the finger, then you probably put it on correctly. All right, so here's that wrist unit up close. So you can see it also has some instructions here on how to put the finger cuff on. And we have a C1 and a C2. So C1 is cuff one. So the again, the finger cuffs. C2 is cuff two. So you don't necessarily have to have two cuffs or you use both cuffs. So having two cuffs means that you can switch from one finger to the next after a period of time because the tip of the finger, so you have this on the finger, so the tip of the finger will start to turn sort of like a, a, a bluish tinge after a while and it can get a little uncomfortable. So having two cuffs, so you'd have a second finger that you would put another cuff onto, um, gives you the ability to switch between fingers to sort of give a finger a break. Um, however, the blood pressure between fingers is not necessarily going to be the same, so you really want to try to use one finger for the entire trial whenever possible so that you get um, similar blood pressures um, across time throughout the trial or throughout a data collection visit. So these ends of the, um, the finger cuff here are going to plug into the ports underneath here. Um, you want to put it under C1 for the first one. If you use the second one, then you can use C2. Um, so we take these two, these two tubes, so again this one is the air tube, that goes under the, the bottom, well inside the bottom hole, and just kind of put it in there light finger tight, um, give it a little twist to make sure there's a little bit of friction there keeping it in, and then if you look at this one there's a little red dot here. That red dot lines up with this red dot and you just kind of push it in until it clicks. So that is that setup. We also have this device here, which is uh, connected through all this tubing to each other, and that is actually the height correction sensor. All right, so what we're gonna do, um, so there's also this is connected to it, so this is gonna get plugged into the back of the wrist cuff unit right there. It's kind of like a phone type jack. So you just plug that right in, push it until it clicks, and you're going to want to put this sort of big round one on the, um, on the arm or somewhere on the chest or the torso of the body, and there's like a little bit of Velcro here so you can attach it to um, the person using that um, Velcro, but you want this to be at the level of the right atrium of the heart, so somewhere in the upper chest. Um, if the person is laying down, you can just put it on the arm level with the right atrium. If they are upright, you probably want to put it um, on the arm or on the chest itself. The other side of this, which is this unit here, um, also has a little bit of sort of Velcro here, if you can see it. Um, that Velcro is there so it can attach to the outside of the finger cuff, just like that. And so this is... Um, the other side of the height sensor, so again these two together equal the height sensor, and what you want to do is um, essentially you're going to have to zero these out, so you're going to have to put them together and through the software, which I'll show you in a second, you zero those two out so that they are equal to each other, so that when one goes higher than the other one, it senses that in the software and it's going to be able to do uh, a digital adjustment for the blood pressure because if the finger is higher than the heart, then the blood pressure is going to be lower. If the finger is lower than the heart, then the blood pressure is going to be higher than what it really is. So you need to do some sort of adjustment for that, and this 
height sensor is going to allow you to do that. So again, this one goes somewhere at the level of the heart. This one is going to go on the finger so that we can know where the finger is relative to the heart. Alright, so what you can see here, I have the arm set up completely done. So I have the finger cuff on, I have the wrist unit on, it's strapped on with Velcro. I have another strap around my forearm just kind of keeping the cord to that wrist unit um, sort of stable so it's not pulling on the wrist unit. And then one more strap like that on my upper arm. Um, so I also have the height sensor here that is plugged into the back of the wrist strap with that telephone-like wire. And then I have one part of the wrist or one part of the height unit on the finger cuff here. It's attached with the Velcro. And the other part, which I'm holding in my other hand, my right hand here, is eventually going to be attached right there on my um, sort of upper arm cuff because that is about level with the right atrium of my heart. But I'm going to keep it off for just a moment because I'm going to use this um, uh, right next to the other one in order to calibrate this at the beginning once we open the software. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, so now first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the LabTart 8 software. And you're going to see here it's loading, it's looking for different devices, it's making sure that the power lab is connected and turned on, and also that the, um, the NIVP unit down here is connected and turned on. Nothing popped up with any errors, so everything's connected. If an error popped up, as long as it wasn't one of those two, you can just click OK to get through that. Um, now we have our settings files here. We can open a new file here that wouldn't have any previous settings in there. But with the um, NIBP, this non-invasive blood pressure um, system here, there's a lot of setup to it. So um, if you need to do that, uh, you'll have to do that another time or learn that another time. So we're just going to do a sort of simple, uh, sort of get, get up and go here. So I'm going to click on this 30% hand grip trial, but a couple of these different uh, settings files have the ability to run this in them. So I'm going to click on that now. All right, so we have a bunch of different uh, channels here. Most of the channels are things we don't have hooked up at the moment, but I'm going to open up just the ones that we do have that are associated with this system, or I'm going to make them big at least. So scrunch all those, um, scrunch that as well. So here is the finger blood pressure channel. So that is where the raw data from this is going to get input. You're going to actually see the blood pressure tracing. All right, so everything that we're going to get from this unit is going to eventually come from the data in that channel. All right, so the next channel is the systolic blood pressure channel, then the diastolic blood pressure channel, then the mean arterial blood pressure channel. Then we have the heart rate channel that comes from this, so it's just going to detect every beat from this device. Um, we can do heart rate other ways as well, but um, it can get it from this. We have Channel after the heart rate is stroke volume. Channel after that is cardiac output. And then the last channel is total peripheral resistance. You can get other stuff from this unit, but those are sort of the core measurements you can get from this unit. So stroke volume, cardiac output, and total peripheral resistance are all, all going to be sort of estimates um, based on the shape of the uh, blood pressure waveform. Um, but you can at least estimate those from just this unit. All right, so before we get started here, we have a few different things we need to get set up in the software. So one is if we go to this stroke volume channel and you right click here where right now it says 10 volts. So right next to or right above where it says uh, SV for stroke volume, just right click that. Any of the channels that have this non-invasive cardiac output um, checked, you need to go into those before every data collection visits. So I just clicked on that and you need to make sure the age and the gender or sex is correct for your participant. So I am 30 and male, so I'm gonna leave it just like that. And that's gonna make sure that it uses the sort of correct, correct parameters in this um, Windcastle model to estimate my stroke volume. So I'm gonna click OK. Um, obviously change those if you need to. Um, in some settings files, you might ha have to do that also for the cardiac output in the stroke volume. I made these calculations myself, so they're not coming directly from the NIBP unit. They're going to be um, calculated from other channels within the um, from within this settings file. So if you right click on the 10 volts above the cardiac output, the Q, 
you'll see that the non-invasive cardiac output is not checked. The arithmetic, arithmetic is checked, which is, again, it's a calculation based on the other channels. So you don't have to do that for this one, but that's just because of the way I set up this settings file. All right, so the other thing we need to do before we get started is go to setup, go down to NIBP HCU and test. So that stands for non-invasive blood pressure height correction unit, which is this black thing with the other black part um, attached to my finger. We need to calibrate that. So we need to actually zero it out. So I'm going to click on that and make sure that the two are right next to each other. So I'm just going to Velcro that right onto my finger with the other one. So they're both right next to each other and hold it nice and still and hit the zero button on the screen. So it says zeroing in process. Now it says HCU is zeroed and ready for use. So if it said anything else, you'd have to troubleshoot and figure out what's going on. But we're ready to go, so I'm just going to click OK. And then you take off this bigger, rounder um, uh, part of the height correction unit, and you're going to put it somewhere level with the right atrium of the heart. So somewhere around here. This might be a little low, but it's pretty close. So I'm going to put it up on my sort of bicep uh, strap here. And if you were doing a project, well, a, a protocol where you were, say, sort of laying on your back or something like that and the arm was up, obviously that wouldn't be the right place. Sometimes you're going to be able to put it out here. Other times you're going to have to put it somewhere on the chest, either on the front of the chest or on the side of the chest. Um, but it has to be at the, the same height from the ground as your right atrium. All right, so everything's set up at this point, so we should be able to hit start and start recording data. So when I hit this, you're going to see a little warning, warning sign pop up. So I'm going to hit start. And we have this little warning that says sampling will inflate the finger cuff and blah, 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 some other things. So what it's saying is if you do not have a finger inside of this finger cuff, what's going to happen is the air is going to come into the finger cuff and it would actually keep coming in uh, to the point where it might damage the cuff. It can actually make the air bladder within the cuff explode. So never ever run this with a finger cuff connected to the race unit unless there's something inside of that finger cuff because it will inflate too much and damage the cuff and these are pretty expensive so you don't want to do that. So I'm ready to go, my finger's in there, I'm set up so I'm going to hit sample and you're going to see data starting to collect here. All right, so a lot of these channels are sort of outside of what is being displayed on the y-axis so if we just double click the gray area it'll put them into focus. So First thing you're going to notice here with the blood pressure channel is that there's this sort of squared off waveform that's happening. So that's the calibration that the system is doing to try to figure out what the blood pressure should be and make sure that it's got a quality signal. After it's done with that calibration, you see these waveforms here that are actually what a blood pressure waveform looks like. So I'll just zoom in a little bit by hitting this big mountain sign. Um, so let's get all these centered here. So just double click on all the, the gray spaces here and it'll auto scale the Y axis. All right, so we have blood pressure being sensed and we have each one of these channels um, displaying the calculated variables coming from this blood pressure channel or coming from the, the blood pressure tracing within the unit. All right, so Systolog, diastolog, mean pressure, heart rate, stroke volume, cardiac output, and total peripheral resistance are all being calculated from this channel. So you need to make sure this channel is really good and really quality. All right, so a couple things to keep in mind. So let's just blow up this channel so you can see it nice and clearly. All right, so the tops of these, um, these waveforms here are the systolic blood pressures, the bottom are the diastolic blood pressures, and you can see some different notches in there. So the waveform looks a little different because it's a finger blood pressure and not a brachial blood pressure. A brachial blood pressure would be a little smoother, but that's besides the point. So all the other variables are being calculated from this waveform, from this shape. And so you can see every now and then we have these squared off waveforms. Those are not what the actual blood pressure looks like in that moment. That's called a physiocal. So it's a little mini calibration that happens every so often um, to allow you to be able to make sure that you have quality signal that stays. Um, the problem is if you are doing some sort of trial or test where you want waveforms the whole time, useful waveforms, you have to turn off that. So what you can do, so you can come in here, hit setup, go under NIBP settings, 
and we're going to turn off the auto calibration, which auto calibration enables what the checkbox says. So we'll uncheck that, click close, and then we won't see any more of these physio cows. It'll just look like a normal blood pressure waveform. Well, there's one more there. Let's make sure that it turned off and stayed off. Yes. So we shouldn't see any more of these squared off waveforms here. So from this, you also want to make sure that uh, the person is keeping their hand nice and still. So if I wiggle my finger, you're going to see these waveforms go from this nice uniform shape to looking really jagged. I'm wiggling my fingers now. You can see all kinds of weird shape to that. Um, so that's bad. You want to make sure that they stay nice and still so you can get quality data the whole time. All right, so when you are done, so you've done whatever your test is, you've finished your data collection, hit the stop button and that's going to stop the finger cuff from receiving any air and that's when you can then take the finger cuff off. Never take this finger cuff off unless it is no longer being uh, filled up with air because again you can blow up this finger cuff system. All right, so I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions please put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer those. Otherwise come back and watch another video and thanks for watching this one.